Welcome back children. Have you started preparing for your exams? Shall we start our revision with reproduction in organisms from chapter 1 of biozoology. Reproduction is the biological process by which organisms produce their young ones. So, the basic features of modes of reproduction. It is synthesis of RNA and proteins. Replication of DNA, cell division and growth. Formation of reproductive units and their fertilization. Two major modes of reproduction as we know they are asexual and sexual reproduction. Reproduction in organisms. Types of asexual reproduction. We, will, uh, we have to Go through the types with examples and the diagram in this class. Then the types of sexual reproduction. Stages of life cycle and the types of parthogenesis with examples we will be covering in this revision class. So types of sexual reproduction. Fission, budding, fragmentation and regeneration. So what is fission? It is the division of the parent body into two or more identical daughter individuals. Budding, the parent body produces one or more buds and each bud grows into a young one. The bud separates from the parent to lead a normal life. Okay, this budding can be exogenous or endogenous. Thirdly, we have fragmentation. The parent body breaks into fragments and each of the fragment has the potential to develop into a new individual. We then have regeneration. Regeneration is regrowth in the injured region. Regeneration is of two types. Morphalaxis and epimorphosis. Okay. So here regeneration in morphalaxis where the whole body grows from a small fragment. Example hydra, planaria, lizard. Okay. You would have observed lizard. What happens when lizard is accidentally cut into pieces? Each piece can regenerate the lost parts and developed into a whole new individual. Epimorphosis on the other hand it is the replacement of the lost body parts and it is of two types reparative and restorative regeneration. So under asexual reproduction we were talking about binary fission. The parent organism divides into two halves and each half forms a daughter individual. Four types of binary reproduction, fission method are simple irregular binary fission, transverse binary fission, longitudinal binary fission and oblique binary fission. You can look, take a look at the pictures here. Then under multiple fission we have repeated fission and we also have sporulation, strobulation and plasmotomy in asexual reproduction. Now moving on to sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, it involves the fusion of male and female gametes to form a developed zygote which develops into a new organism. Two types of sexual reproduction we have Syngamy which is also called as fertilization and conjugation. What is syngamy? Fusion of two haploid gametes to produce a diploid zygote. Okay. So syngamy is of two types. Again external fertilization and internal fertilization. External fertilization is the Fusion of male and female gametes take place outside the body of the female organisms 
in the water medium example fish and amphibians internal fertilization on the other hand it is the fusion of male and female gametes take place within the body of the female organisms example reptiles mammals okay so here you if you can have a look at the picture there learned about the different kinds of syngamy which is prevalent among the living organisms autogamy exogamy hologamy pedogamy merogamy isogamy anisogamy okay we then move on to conjugation it is the temporary union of the two individuals of the same species during union conjugations exchange certain amount of nuclear material that is the dna and then get separated examples paramecium and bacteria now about the stages of life cycle organisms have three phases juvenile phase reproductive phase and the senescent phase juvenile phase is also called as vegetative phase which is the period of growth between the birth of the individual up to the reproductive maturity reproductive phase or the maturity phase of the organism is from the time the organism starts to re reproduce their offspring and reach maturity period senescent phase begins at the end of the reproductive phase when degeneration in the structure and the functioning of the body starts to happen so you have a picture there and an example for vegetative reproductive and the uh, senescent phase finally in this lesson we recall a boy where we studied about parthenogenesis parthenogenesis is development of an egg into a complete individual without fertilization two types of parthenogenesis natural parthenogenesis and artificial parthenogenesis under natural parthenogenesis what is it it occurs regularly constantly and naturally in the life cycle of certain animals natural parthenogenesis is again of two types complete parthenogenesis no where it is no biparental sexual reproduction only the females and incomplete parthenogenesis where both sexual reproduction and parthenogenesis occurs which has the example of honey bees so queen bee diploid fertilized egg and unfertilized egg haploid female offspring and male offspring female offspring is we have worker bee or the queen bee again what is the seventh chapter human health and diseases so health is a state of complete physical mental and social well being and it is not merely the absence of diseases so in this chapter we cover different topics okay we will be learning about immunology under immunology the basic concepts of immunology you have learned you have learned about tumor immunology okay autoimmune diseases and the scope of immunology immune deficiency diseases were also discussed okay and then under health and the diseases we will learn about we have learned and we will recall about bacterial diseases protozoan diseases helminthic fungal disease viral diseases and under we will also have a quick recap of drugs and alcohol and mental health and depression so 
what is disease it is disorder or malfunction of the mind or body and those that are transmitted from one person to another person we call it infection or communicable diseases those which are not transformed from an infected person but it is because of genetic or nutritional deficiency or if it is degenerative then we call them as non infectious diseases so the common human diseases that we were read about in this chapter were bacterial diseases dysentery plague diphtheria cholera typhoid pneumonia viral diseases common cold mumps measles viral hepatitis dengue fever chikungunya chicken pox and polio mellitus fungal diseases candidiasis athlete's foot protozoan diseases we learnt about malaria amoebiosis african sleeping disease okay sickness and the kala azar helminthic diseases ascariasis and filariasis okay so now bacterial diseases bacterial diseases though we have a vera number of types of bacteria only few bacteria are associated with human diseases which are called as pathogenic bacteria and bacteria the spreads through air water okay or even by inhaling the droplets okay and uh, or even by sharing utensils or dresses with infected people we then learnt about several viral diseases okay viruses are the smallest intracellular obligate parasites which multiply within the living cells but outside the living cells they cannot carry out the characteristics of a living organism only inside the cell okay the viruses they invade the living cells and they force the cells to create new viruses and one common um, uh, infectious um, virus rhino virus it causes common cold which we all are aware of and the four types of virus diseases are pneumotropic diseases which affect the respiratory tract dermatropic diseases affect the blood uh, skin okay and then viscerotropic diseases blood and visceral organs like dengue fever and yellow fever and neurotropic diseases affect the central nervous system examples rabies and polio we then learn about protozoan diseases then we learnt about protozoan diseases about 15 genera of protozoans they live as parasites within the human body and they cause diseases amoebiosis is one common disease which we find uh, which is also called as amoebic dysentery caused by entamoeba histolytica and the house flies are carriers for transmitting the parasite from contaminated feces and water and we also learnt about kala hazar okay kala hazar it is a slow progressing indigenous disease it is caused by protozoan parasite of genus leishmania in india leishmania donavani is the only parasite that is causing this disease and the parasite primarily it infects the reticulo endothelial system signs and symptoms are recurrent fever loss of appetite weakness spleen enlargement anemia okay so indian kala azar has a unique epidemiological feature of being anthropoanthropic female sand flies pick up parasite while feeding on the infected human 
host okay and the sand fly of uh, sand flies are the only known vector of kala azar in india so healthy human host get infection when an infective sand fly vector bites them diseases um we know ringworm is one of the most common fungal disease in the humans and it has uh, dry scaly lesions on the skin nails and the um uh, folds on the skin okay and ringworms of the feet they are known as the disease is known as athlete's foot and uh, um, fungal inf uh, diseases infections are caused from soil or by using the clothes comb or towel of the infected person helminthic disease which we learned it is mostly endoparasitic in the gut and blood of the human beings and cause diseases called helminthiasis okay then we also learned about immunology immunology it is the study of immune system protects an individual from various infective diseases the overall ability of the body to fight against the diseases causing pathogen is called as immunity okay look have a look at the picture that uh, immunity you have innate immunity and adaptive immu immunity so what is innate immunity it is the natural phenomenon of resistance to infection which an individual possesses right from birth the immunity that an individual acquires after birth is known as acquired immunity it is the body's resistance to fight against pathogens antibodies so what are these antibodies the bodies are immunoglobulin protein molecules synthesized on exposure to antigen that can combine specifically with the antigen they are called as antibodies whenever pathogens enter a body the b lymphocytes which we learned produce an army of proteins called antibodies to fight with them they are secreted in response to an antigen by the effect of b cells and it is called as plasma cell the function of immunoglobulin are agglutination precipitation opponization and neutralization so have a look at the structure of the antibody uh, immunoglobulin so you have antigen binding site variable region light chain disulfide bond heavy chain and the constant region immunodeficiency disease aids yes so acronym for acquired immuno deficiency syndrome and it results from deficiency of components in immune system primary immune deficiencies are caused by genetic developmental defects but the secondary immune deficiencies are caused due to radiation or use of cytolytic and immunosuppressive drugs and infections okay then we learnt about the structure of hiv if you can see the structure this perical virus it belongs to genus lentivirus measured about 100 to 120 nm in diameter okay it contains enzymes like protease and ribonuclease covered by protein capsid with maxid protein what are the tests test to uh, find out if a person is infected with hiv elisa test and the western blot test and the preventive measures okay safe blood transfusion safe sex and disposal of needles we then learnt about autoimmune deficiency diseases immune diseases due to abnormal immune response fails to distinguish self and non self antibodies and cytotoxic t cells destroy own tissues auto antigen cells access 
एंटीजन ऑफ सेम बॉडी ओके वी देन लर्न अबाउट ट्यूमर इम्यूनोलॉजी ट्यूमर और द नियोप्लासम विच कंटिन्यू टू ग्रो एंड इनवेड हेल्थी सेल्स एस वी सी एन कैंसर ओके देन वी लर्न अबाउट ड्रग्स इनटेक ऑफ ड्रग्स अदर देन क्लिनिकल यूज लीड्स टू इम्पेयर वंस फिजिकल एंड फिजियोलॉजिकल फंक्शंस एंड इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज ड्रग अब्यूज ओके एंड इट अटैक्स सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम द इंटेस्टाइनल ट्रैक्ट ओके एंड इवन वी कैन गेट हेल्यूसिनेशन वी लर्न अबाउट एल्कोहॉल द साइको एक्टिव ड्रग acts on brain affecting person's mind and behavior a depressant it slows down the activity of the nervous system so effects of drugs and alcohol feels a false sense of well being pleasant drowsiness euphoria pain dullness of sense be blood pressure nausea okay so serious damage of cns physical and mental disturbance can occur heart attack liver cirrhosis are also possible so prevention and control measures we talked about effectively dealing with peer pressure seeking help from parents and peers educating and counseling looking for danger signs seeking help from professional and medical assistance and then about the mental health state of well being of mind we call mental health it gives us self esteem it reflects good personality liking yourself okay to improve the quality of life and then about depression it is common mental disorder depressed mood loss of interest or pleasure low self worth poor appetite and concentration then we call as depression preventive measures are exercise meditation shall we quickly go recall uh, the eighth chapter in plant uh, biology or botany about the environmental issues environmental issues are the problems and harmful effects created by humans unmindful activity and over utilization of valuable resources obtained from nature or environment then we have environmental issues so first we talked about greenhouse effect and global warming in that we discussed effects of global warming sources of greenhouse gases and emissions strategies to deal with global warming ozone depletion and effects of ozone depletion environmental issues the first one uh, we then learnt about forestry signs of creating managing and conserving the forest okay for human and environmental benefits it is practiced on plantations and natural stands deforestation do you remember conversion of forested area into non forested area is called as deforestation one of the major contributors to enhance greenhouse effects and global warming is deforestation causes conversion of forest into agri plantation and livestock livestock ranching okay and then development mental activities like road construction electric tower dams okay all these lead to deforestation overpopulation industrialization urbanization increases the global need afforestation planting of trees where there was no previous tree coverage and the conversion of non forested lands into forest by planting suitable trees to retrieve vegetation oh, the if you can alien invasive species species introduced to distress ecosystem process okay reduce native herbs and reduce ecosystem benefits during eradication of these species the chemicals used increases 
greenhouse gases slowly they alter the ecosystem microclimate nature of soil human health issues like allergy are caused due to these chemicals so what is invasive species non native species to the ecosystem or the country that spreads naturally interfere with biology of existence natural species possess a serious threat to the ecosystem and cause economic loss so example echornia this is a weed native to south america aquatic ornamental plant okay widespread growth of this decreases the oxygen content and leads to eutrophication then we learnt about conservation if you can see here biodiversity conservation it has in situ conservation ex situ conservation in situ conservation means conservation and management of genetic resources in their natural habitats ex situ is a method of conservation where species are protected outside their natural environment so we then discussed about carbon capture and storage ccs is a technology of capturing carbon dioxide and injecting it deep into the underground rocks to a depth of a 1 km or more and it is an approach to mitigate global warming by capturing carbon dioxide from large point sources such as industries and power plants and by storing it instead of releasing it into the atmosphere we then talked about carbon footprint cfp okay the carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gases produced by human activities such as agriculture industries deforestation waste disposal burning fossil fuels directly or indirectly it is usually estimated and expressed in equivalent tons of carbon dioxide per year we then also learnt about rain water harvesting it is the accumulation and storage of rain water for reuse in site rather than allowing it to run off okay and then environmental impact assessment it is eia environment it is an environmental management tool it helps to regulate and recommend optimal use of natural resources with minimum impact on ecosystem and biotic communities then bia biodiversity impact assessment this can be defined as a decision supporting tool to help biodiversity inclusive of development planning and implementation biodiversity can be assessed by change in land use and cover fragmentation and isolation extraction okay then finally we learnt about geographic information system gis it is a computer system for capturing storing checking and displaying data related to positions on earth surface and also to manipulate analyze and manage the present spatial and geographical data so the importance car in environmental impact assessment disaster management when we learn tree production in plants we do, you studied about apomixis reproduction involving fertilization in flowering plants we call them as amphimixis and whenever the reproduction does not involve union of male and female gametes it is called as apomixis it is defined as the substitution of the usual sexual system usual sexual system is the apomixis by a form which is substituted by a form of reproduction which does not involve meiosis and syngamy then it is apomixis 
There are two types of apomixis. Re recurrent apomixis, it includes vegetative reproduction and agamospermy. It's exam time. Work hard. Prepare well children. Happy learning.